a new kingdom that is kingdom Mycota are also called as kingdom Fungi. So this is the third kingdom in your five kingdom classification which is proposed by R.H. White. So we will be starting with the third kingdom, kingdom Mycota are Fungi. So here this group, the kingdom Mycota which includes a unique group of heterotrophic organisms. So this kingdom mainly includes heterotrophic organisms. Previously you have studied autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition but in this kingdom we cannot find any autotrophic forms. Here all organisms are heterotrophic in nature which means they cannot synthesize their own food. They are always dependent upon other organisms. So that is very unique feature in this kingdom. So kingdom mycota it includes the organisms which are mainly heterotrophic in nature. And whatever the organisms which comes under kingdom mycota, they show great diversity in their morphology and habitat. Morphology, it is nothing but external features and habitat, it refers to occurrence or where the organisms are present. So we can say habitat is nothing but occurrence or place where they are present. So here these organisms, they show great diversity in their morphology as well as habitat. So different organisms, they are present in different habitats and even their morphology is also entirely different. For example, you look at these diagrams. So these are the fungi, you can observe the different morphology. So they have different external appearance and even they are present in different habitat also. See for example, this one, agaricus or mushroom, which is commonly growing on dead and decaying organic matter. And there is one more organism, yeast. It is used in a bakery so for the preparation of bread, cake, etc. And some organisms like rhizocos, which will be growing on rotten fruits and vegetables. Likewise, they are present in different habitats. And in order to understand the morphology and habitat, let's take few more examples. As I said, you may have eaten bread, cake, etc. So during the preparation of bread and cake, they use one fungi. So the fungi is called as yeast. So yeast it is commonly called as baker's yeast and as it is commonly used in bakeries for, the, for baking bread as well as cake. So you may have never known that this one yeast is used in the preparation of bread and cake. That is very interesting. And even the mushroom. So mushroom water, uh, the mushroom may, you may have eaten, even that mushroom also belongs to the mycota. And we we'll take few more examples. When you have absorbed on the rotten fruits, vegetables, or even sometimes if you keep bread for several days, on the bread a mound will be growing, which is made up of thread-like structures. So even that is also called as fungi. What the mound which grows on the bread or rotten fruits and vegetables that also belongs to in the mycota. And you may have seen the white spots on the leaves. Especially when you absorb the mustard leaves, on the mustard leaves, some white spots can be seen. Those white spots also because of fungi. Likewise, they show great diversity in their morphology and habitat. Now, we will discuss the salient features of kingdom mycota. Salient features are common features which, which have the organisms which belong to this kingdom. So what are the salient features of the kingdom mycota? See, as I said, this kingdom mainly includes a unique group of unique group of heterotrophic organisms and they include a chlorophyllous eukaryotes. We will say the kingdom mycota includes the unique group of chlorophyllous eukaryotes. So they are a 
amino acids are there for and they may be dependent upon other organisms. So these are very very important and unique features of in the microbiome. Then here very importantly the plant body in fungi is called as mycelium. The plant body is called as a mycelium which is made up of a network of filaments called iFail. These terms are very very important. These terms we are commonly using in this kingdom mycota. So here only in kingdom mycota the plant body is called as mycelium and this mycelium consists of the network of filaments called as iFail. Let me write one simple example. See for example so these are some thread like structures in any fungi when you observe the plant body which is made up of thread like structures one single thread like structure is called as iFA so the thread like structures in fungi are called as iFA and all these iFA are aggregated are interconnected to form mycelium so this entire thing is called as mycelium the iFA are interconnected are aggregated to form mycelium. Just you remember if you observe a, a ball of threads, a ball of threads, one single thread like structure is called as iFA and the entire thing about the structure is called as mycelium. So this is very important in this kingdom. And when we say iFA, as I said, there are thread like structures called as iFA. And when you refer to IFA, so this IFA, a single IFA, sometimes this IFA contains some crosswords. Crosswords are set up. Sometimes the IFA, the thread like structure, which contains some crosswords are set up. Such a IFA is called as septate IFA. If IFA contains septa, it is called as septate IFA. If they do not contain any crosswords of septa, such a IFA is called as aseptate IFA. So this is again important. If they contain septa, they are septate IFA. If they do not contain any septa or crosswords, such a condition is called as aseptate or also called as serocytic condition. Try to remember. Here the plant body in fungi is called as mycelium. So mycelium is nothing but the interconnected IFA. Together they form mycelium and each single thread like structure is called as IFA. That IFA may contain crosswords or may not contain crosswords. If it contains a septa, it is a septate IFA. If it does not contain septa, it is called as a septate or cenocytic IFA. Then here. Here, the cell wall is mainly made up of a chemical composition called as chitin. The cell wall composition is entirely different in different organisms. For example, in plants, the cell wall is mainly made up of cellulose. Similarly, in bacteria, the cell wall is made up of a peptidoglycol, and in fungi, the cell wall is mainly made up of chitin. Here, there are eukaryotes. They have cell having a cell wall and that cell wall is mainly made up of chitin. This is very very important. And this chitin you will say it is a nitrogen enriched cellulose. It is nitrogen enriched cellulose and as they are eukaryotes they have two nucleus and membrane bone cell organs. And here we say heterotrophic. You have studied under heterotrophic mode of nutrition. They have parasitic mode of nutrition, saprophytic and symbiotic mode of nutrition. Even here in kingdom mycota, they may be parasitic or saprophytic. Yeah, they are purely heterotrophic in nature. Under heterotrophs, you have to do different mode of nutrition. So, they may be parasitic. If they are parasitic, they are present either within the organism or on the surface of the organism. They may cause diseases also. If they are saprophytic, they are mainly growing on dead and decaying organic matter. And if they are symbiotic, they have symbiotic association or mutually beneficial association with other organisms. So that also we will be able to study here. And they are parasites or saprophytes. But here some organisms they have symbiotic association also, especially the lichens. Some organisms like lichens and mycorrhiza. So this mycorrhiza is actually fungus and lichens is a 
separate group of organ cells that you will study in this chapter at the end so here lichens and mycorrhiza they form a symbiotic association and they have great economic importance that you will study later and the reserve food material in fungi it is also very important in kingdom mycota the reserve food material is either glycogen and oil droplets as you said in case of bacteria or in uh, glycogen and oil droplets etc in kingdom mycota the reserve food material is glycogen and oil droplets then when you come to the reproduction in fungi they reproduce both asexually as well as sexually so asexual reproduction mainly takes place by the asexual reproduction mainly takes place by fragmentation budding and conidia formation so what is the fragmentation if the parent organism if it is broken down into pieces each piece is considered as a fragment and each fragment has the capacity to develop into a new organism or a complete organism that is called fragmentation yes that fragmentation can be seen in kingdom mycota and body so what is this body if this is the organism a parent organism a small bud will be developing over the parent organism later the cytoplasm will be moved to the bud and nucleus will be divided to divided and passed into the bud later this bud detaches to form a new organism that is called as body and conidia formation here you can see so here there are some spores called as conidia conidia they are always exogenous exogenous means they are usually produced at the tip of the organism here the entire body of the organism is mycelium only they have hyphae that may be aseptic hyphae or aseptic hyphae and they have special hyphal branches which contain the exogenous spores called as conidia so conidia are asexual spores so here i am talking about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction takes place by fragmentation budding and conidia formation and sexual reproduction takes place by ascospores zygospores basidiospores and oospores so asexual reproduction takes place by oospores zygospores ascospores and basidiospores that you will understand when we talk about the respective classes so that is about the salient features but one more thing here the sexual reproduction the sexual cycle involves some unique property it is called as plasmogamy and karyogamy plasmogamy and karyogamy so these are actually they are involved in the sexual cycle so what is this plasmogamy plasmogamy is nothing but fusion of protoplasm the fusion of protoplasm is called as plasmogamy so what is actually protoplasm see if a cell having nucleus and cytoplasm so this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm the nucleus and cytoplasm together it is called as protoplasm it is very important so protoplasm is nothing but nucleus and cytoplasm then what is plasmogamy it is the fusion of protoplasm between the two gametes maybe on a male and one motile and non motile gametes when they comes together their protoplasm will undergo fusion let me explain with the diagram see if this is one gamete and this is the other gamete let it be their motile or non motile when two cells or two gametes comes together initially their walls will be dissolved their walls will be dissolved now there will be a fusion of cytoplasm initially uh, the nucleus will not undergo fusion firstly the cytoplasm will undergo fusion so resulting in the formation of one cell having two nucleus because here i told you at the time of plasmogamy initially the cytoplasm will be formed and a cell containing two nucleus later this karyogamy is nothing but fusion of nucleus so after some time both the nucleus will fuse to form one nucleus this condition is called as karyogamy
lung. So it's very important in kingdom mycota, the sexual cycle involves in two phases. One is plasmogamy and another one is called as a karyogamy. Plasmogamy, it is the fusion of protoplasm and karyogamy is the fusion of a nucleus. So that completes the salient features of kingdom mycota. And this kingdom mycota, it is divided into four classes. Kingdom mycota is divided into four classes, namely phycomyces, ascomyces, basidiomyces, and deuteromyces. So all these classes are again important. We will discuss these classes in data. So there are four classes under kingdom mycota, namely phycomyces, ascomyces, basidiomyces, and deuteromyces. So first we will be discussing the phycomyces. So here, so in all these classes, we are mainly focusing on where they are present. What about the uh, hyper condition? Whether the IPA is a septate IPA or a septate IPA, and asexual mode of reproduction and sexual mode of reproduction. So these are the points uh, which we have focused on among all these classes. So firstly, as I said, the occurrence or habitat, these phycomyces are usually aquatic and some are present in damp places where the stagnant water is there or moist conditions are there. In such conditions also some organisms will be growing but most of them are aquatic in habitat. And what about the IFA? Here, the IFA is aseptic or cenocytic. Here the IFA is aseptic or cenocytic in nature. And here asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction. So this asexual reproduction it mainly takes place by the zoospore formation. Asexual reproduction by zoospores are aplanospores. The asexual reproduction. So what is actually asexual reproduction? Generally, there will be a male gamut, there will be a female gamut. If male and female gametes undergo fusion, that is called as sexual reproduction. If sex hormones are involved and the male and female gametes are fused, that is called as sexual reproduction. But asexual means there is no fusion of gametes. Without the fusion of gametes also, a new organism can be obtained. So about this asexual reproduction, we will study in detail in university QC. So without the fusion of gametes also, a new organism can be obtained. So that is called asexual reproduction in phycomyces. Asexual reproduction, it takes place by zoospores and aplanospores. Actually, these zoospores are motile. If they are motile, they can be able to grow with the help of a laboratory organ. Here, they have flagella. See, a zoospore looks like this and it contains two flagella. Zoospores are always motile, you should remember this. Zoospores are the motile spores because they have flagella. And these eight narrow spores are non motile. They are non motile. Why they are non motile? Because they do not contain any flagella or locomotory organ. They will be like this. The non motile spores are called as eight narrow spores, and motile spores are called as zoo spores as they contain flagella. Then, sexual reproduction. And here, very importantly, the zoo spores are eight narrow spores. These spores are endogenous in origin. If they are produced within the organism, they are called as endogenous. If they are produced outside, see here you can observe the spores are produced at the tip. So these are 
sexual reproduction and the spores are produced in endogenous origin as they are produced within the sporangia. And this sexual reproduction is by iso or heterogametes. Heterogametes. The sexual reproduction may be isogamous or heterogamous. So, what is this isogamous? Here, the fusion between two morphologically similar gametes. For example, if both the gametes are morphologically similar, the male and female gametes, if they look exactly each other, so if the fusion taking place between such morphologically similar gametes, it is called isogamous. So this ascus is called as a fruiting body. In the same thing, it is called as ascus. 
These pores are called as as pores pores, which are mainly produced in your foot and body called as as pus. And during meiosis, it produces as pores pores. As they are produced within the ascus, they are endogenous in origin. But the quality are exogenous, whereas as pores pores are endogenous. Let me repeat once again. As pores they may be unicellular or multicellular. They are either parasites or saprophytes. And here the mycelium is branch and the hyphae is septic. A sexual reproduction takes place by corinia and their exogenous in origin. Sexual reproduction takes place by ascospores, which are produced in a fruiting body. And that fruiting body is called as ascus. During meiosis, it produces ascospores, and as they are produced within the ascus, they are endogenous in origin. And examples here we can take yeast, penicillium, morels, truffles. Here they have great economic importance. As I said, yeast it is commonly used in bakeries for making bread, cake, etc. And this is penicillium. Do you know a antibiotic called as penicillin? Penicillin, which is extracted by Sir Alexander Fleming, actually they he extracted from this fungi. So from this penicillium, they extracted the antibiotic called as a penicillin that is used for the medical purpose. And these morals and purpose, these are edible as for cups. Like as in the case of mushroom, similarly the morals and truffles are edible as for cups. These are follicle and these are tumor like structures which are used for edible purpose. So that completes as for mycelium. And next one, basidiomyces. Basidiomyces. So here, basidiomyces, uh, they may be parasites or saprophytes. Usually, most of them are saprophytes. Uh, they are growing on dead and decaying organic matter. And even here also, the mycelium is branched and hyphae is septic. Hyphae is septic. Mycelium is branched and hyphae is septate. And very importantly, asexual spores are absent. Asexual spores are absent. It is very important. See here, you have seen asexual reproduction. Here also there is asexual reproduction. Here, asexual spores are absent, but vegetative reproduction can be taken place with the help of fragmentation. Asexual reproduction by fragmentation. Sorry, vegetative reproduction by fragmentation. So, what is vegetative reproduction? Actually, vegetative reproduction it is a kind of asexual reproduction only because even in vegetative reproduction there is no fusion of gametes. The parent body itself broken down to form fragments and each fragment will develop into a new audience. That's why we can consider vegetative as a type of asexual reproduction. But asexual spores are completely absent. We cannot find any asexual spores like zoospores, spores, spores, only fragmentation can be seen. And another important thing here, the sex organs are also absent. Sex organs are also absent. If, se if sex organs are absent, you will think that the sexual reproduction is also absent. But here you cannot think like that. It is a, a unique group under the kingdom mycota. Here, sex organs are absent, but it sexually shows plasmogamy. In this group, we can see plasmogamy. Actually, what is plasmogamy? The fusion of protoplasm between two cells or two gametes. Here, sex organs are absent. We cannot see that the male and female gamete undergo fusion. Their protoplasm will be fused. We cannot say like that. Here, actually, it is plasmogamy which is brought about by 
sexually introduced plasmogamy and this plasmogamy is brought about by diffusion of two vegetative cells two vegetative cells see for example during plasmogamy these two cells they are under the fusion for example at the time of plasmogamy their wall is dissolved their wall is dissolved now one cell having two nucleus try to understand initially there is a wall in your at the time of plasmogamy the wall is dissolved now a single cell having two nucleus two nuclei and this stage is called as dikaryotic stage or dikaryon a cell is now a dikaryon because it contains two nucleus dikaryon refers to two karyon refers to nuclei so it contains a dikaryon this stage is called as dikaryotic stage so try to remember six other cell absent sexually it shows plasmogamy by the fusion of two vegetative cells so now a dikaryotic stage is there and this dikaryon leads to the formation of a club shaped structure called as basidium actually we can say in this agarcus only see here the hyphae some hyphae the vegetative cells will undergo fusion now one cell having two nucleus and this is the dikaryotic stage now this dikaryon produces a club shaped basidium it produces a club shaped basidium so this is called as basidium and this is the fruiting body in basidiomycetes the fruiting body is called as basidium see in ascomycetes the fruiting body is called as ascus actually it is a sac like structure in ascomycetes also called as sac fungi as it produces a sac like fruiting body it is called as a sac fungi but here in basidiomycetes the fruiting body is basidium and it is a Here also these dendromycetes, they are mostly 
causes rust decay. Rust disease are white spots on the mustard leaves. So they cause us white spots on mustard leaves. They are mostly parasitic in nature. And I P is a separate I P. I P is a separate, which means they contain cross walls. And here, asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction by conidia. So likewise, here also in Dionysus, the asexual reproduction takes place with the help of conidia formation and conidia exogenous in origin. And sexual reproduction. So here, sexual reproduction is absent. Sexual reproduction is absent. This is very very important. As sexual reproduction is absent, it is called fungi imperfect type or imperfect fungi. So we can say sexual reproduction is absent or it has not yet been discovered. So it is called as fungi imperfect type. So it is very simple. Deuteromycetes are parasites. They cause white spots or uh, white spots or mustard leaves. The I phase is separate I phase. A sexual reproduction by Corydia and sexual reproduction is completely absent or not yet been discovered. So it is called as fungi imperfect type. And examples include Trichoderma, Alternaria, etc. So this completes the thing of my quota. Here are all the points which we have discussed. The salient features are important. Mycelium, I phase important. Cellular composition, reserve food material are important. Then when you come to classes, here in order to remember these classes, we should mainly remember the habitat where they are present. What about the I phase condition, whether they are septic or aseptic. So asexual mode in each class, how the asexual reproduction taking place and how the sexual reproduction is taking place along with the examples. If you remember that much, you can understand better and why it is called sarcophagy, why it is glophophagy, why it is fungi, imperfect type, all these are very important. So that completes in the micro. Now we will discuss few objective questions related to the topic. First one, select the correct statement from the following for kingdom mycota. Option uh, mycota are from right. So first one, they are adenotrophic. Second one, they show less diversity in morphology and habitat. Third one, yeast is an unicellular fungus. Uh, next one, they prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Here option A, A and D correct. Option B, C and D correct. Option C, A, C, D correct. Option D, A and D only correct. Here, just observe the statement. They are heterotrophic. Yes, they are purely heterotrophic. Correct. They show less diversity in morphology and habitat. It is wrong. I told you. They show great diversity in their morphology and habitat. So, second statement is wrong. Third one, yeast is an unicellular fungus. It is correct. And next one, they prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Yes, of course, they usually grow. The fungus will prefer some warm and humid places. That's why when you keep the food items in the refrigerator, they will not be attacked to the fungus because the fungus will not prefer the cool environment. So here option C, A, C and D only correct. Next question, which of the following are examples of fungus? Option A, Torstor, Option B, Faxinia, Option C, Yeast, Option D, All. Here all are fungi only. So option D is correct. Next one. Which of the following plates belongs to the same kingdom? So here they have given some, some examples. Uh, you, should, uh, you should observe which are the organisms which belongs to the same kingdom. See option A, Mycoplasma and Eudrina. Option B, Golden Algae and Green Algae. Option C, Toadstool and Alpigo. Option D, Lichens and Alternaria. See in option A, they have given Mycoplasma and Eudrina. You know Mycoplasma belongs to kingdom. Monera, Urina belongs to Protista, so it is wrong. Next option B, Golden Algae and Green Algae. Actually, Golden Algae belongs to Protista, Green Algae belongs to Plantae, it is also wrong. Option C, Torstone and Albigo. Actually, both are belonging to Kingdom Mycota. And option D, Lichens are Lichens and Alternaria. Lichens are separate group of organisms, and Alternaria belongs to Kingdom Mycota. So here, option C, Torstone and so these are the few questions that are related to the topic. Remaining questions we can discuss later.
So that completes the my quota. Thank you.